in all tradition of Buddhism, the eight noble path is the teaching, is the practice, is the path for everybody to walk on. Because it is called noble path. Eight noble path. They are like a highway with many lines. They have eight lines. And wherever you are in any lines, you are in the path. This is the amazing discovery in our practice. That you don't need to do one path and then another path and then another path separately. Um, so with the inside of interbeing, we just need to walk on one path and automatically we walk in the whole path, right? No matter what line you are, you are still in the highway. Yeah. As long as you enter the highway, you are in the highway. So mindfulness is the, uh, is the entrance to the path. You can enter the path in, in many, in, in every path you can enter. But mindfulness is the, the door that we enter to the Eight Noble Path in Plum Village. When we are mindful, we know that we can embrace, we can get in touch with, and that's what we call concentration. That is what we call stopping. And when we stop and get in touch with, then we have a chance to look deeply, to understand and to learn. Our teacher, there's a, a quote here that I quote. So mindfulness help us to recognize what is happening in the present moment. So in order to recognize what is the present moment, it requires stopping, looking deeply, and recognizing both uniqueness of the moment and its connection from the past and the future. So we are not only recognizing what is happening in the present moment, but we also recognizing the connection of the manifestation to the past and to the future. Because the present moment is made from the past. And the past will make, and the present moment will make the future. So these three times inter are. So we don't get caught in what we feel in the present moment, because what we experience in the present moment is continuation from the past, and it will go towards the future. So if we can take care of the present moment, we can heal the past. We can also heal the future. Heal the future means we can prevent suffering in the future. And we have a very clear path of practice to generate mindfulness. We have Anapanasati Sutra from the Majjhima Nikaya. We have Satipatthana Sutra from the Majjhima Nikaya also, in the Sutra book. And these two Sutra teach us how to generate mindfulness in ourself. And in ourself, we have body and we have mind. And this Sutra is very detailed. It even explained to us that the mind has four parts. The mind has the feeling, the mind has mental formation, the mind has perception, and the consciousness. 
so we can generate mindfulness in any part of this is is any part of ourselves concerning the five aggregates the five skandhas we can generate mindfulness when we come back to our breath because our breath is also our body we can generate mindfulness through our somatosensory our muscle our skin our tension our relaxing feeling we can get in touch with the uh, physiological aspect of our body our action our movement we can also be mindful of what our body made of from the air from the earth from the water from the sun from the space and etc we also can get in touch with our body through the body parts from the head to the feet and this is very interesting exercise when i practice this in the blooming of the lotus there is exercise breathing in i'm aware of the hair on my head and breathing out i smile to the hair of my head and for me this is a very creative way to be concent- concentrated because when you smile you need to smile to an object so you have to know also roughly where is the geography of your hair it must be here not here right so we have to move our mind to the top of our head and then you smile and then the next exercise is i'm aware of my eyes and you move your attention to your eyes and you smile to your eyes and you need a certain level of concentration to do that and so on and so on and when we practice deeply this exercise each part of the organ can give us information can give us insight and can give us happiness like aware of my teeth i breathe in smile to my thre- teeth i breathe out a very simple exercise and suddenly you realize that your teeth is also your digestion system is that correct the teeth is also your bone that come out from your body and the best part is when they are not painful and you realize that oh it is not painful my teeth are not painful and that is it can give you happiness <coughs> yeah so getting in touch with the body we can stop we can be concentrated and get inside directly very simple practice so the anapanasati sutra and the satipatthana sutra both sutra are very powerful and it's a very wonderful way to get in touch to ourselves and heal and this is a long life practice a long life study so don't be too hurry to study all of this sutra i know that it, in upper hamlet you study this sutra and uh, take your time and just be relaxed about it if you don't understand tell yourself it's okay volunteer to not understand so that you don't struggle yeah and then our teacher not only teaching this sutra but also our teacher has a uh, uh, learn from yogacara school from the master of vashubandhu he is from the 4th or the 5th century in the common era is a very um it's almost like a meditation scientist at that time and they wrote a lot of uh buddhist psychology how the mind work yeah. and to translate the buddha's teaching into more systematical and has a graphic has a diagram and etc so the diagram that you have seen a lot with the circle they are uh, from this school and from this school 
we learn that there is a part of our mind called manas, called the lover, and and we contemplate why it is called the lover, and somehow this part is creating a lot of suffering. Mm. And then when I contemplate and I say that yes, it is the lover because this part of the mind it just search for pleasure for ourselves so that we can feel happy actually. But with the ignorance, somehow the pleasure is not really ethical, it's not really in a good direction. Because to feel happy, to feel good, the, the source is very important. We need to know wha- what is the source. Because there is a source of pleasant feeling that can caught you that can jail you, make you into prison, and you're not free anymore. But there are also pleasant feelings that can come from freedom, that can come from insight of interbeing. So we need to find a way to practice in a way that we get the pleasant feeling, not from the that source that can imprison us. The source that can imprison us is something from outside. We, our happiness is only depends on our in external condition. And we can say that, oh, now there is a sun, I feel happy. And then when the sun goes away, you feel suffer again, because it depends on outside condition. Yeah. But we have the right also in the present moment to enjoy the sun in freedom because the sun is available we enjoy it it's the same object but the source can be different in the mind and because of this part of the mind want us to feel happy but has no insight then we continue to suffer because this part of the mind looking for pleasure in a very limit view yeah, in a very limited insight and it used a lot of uh, habit energy yeah. and and we will go around and around in our habit energy So, so with mindfulness, we can recognize what is this part of the mind produce? Yeah. Where is this mind? Uh, in our action. Yeah. So we want to detect that with mindfulness so that we know this is the habit energy and we can transform that habit energy with times. Yeah, not fighting with compassion. With compassion, we embrace, recognize, and transform. This part of the mind has the access to the 
bad experience that we had. It has also access to the good experience that we had. That is why we can get attached to the good experience very quickly. And we can run away from our bad experience very quickly also, before our conscious mind aware of it. Because this mind is unconscious, it is not conscious mind. It has no moderation. It does not want to know that suffering is good for our happiness. Does not know that we can use our suffering to generate compassion. Of course, we don't look for suffering, but the suffering is there. It does not know the interbeing nature from the past, the present and the future, and that is why we get caught. So with mindfulness, we can help to brighten, to brighten our consciousness, so we can see what happened. Mm. And one of the biggest uh, event in our life is uh, was at the time when we were born. At that time, we were cut off, separated from someone that has been with us. 24 hours for many months. And that is a terrible experience to feel alone, to feel helpless, to feel hungry, to have to breathe, and etc. And that is become our experience and become the habit energy inside of us. And of course, at that time, the only dream that we have is to re-experience again the condition in the womb of our mother. And of course, the only things that we want, we do not want to experience, is to be separated, to be disconnected, to be alone, to be cut off. But somehow, these two habit continue the whole life in every aspect of our life. <coughs> Last month I practiced sit upright in meditation. And in, ev in a simple some minutes only, I already bend my body. And I have to bend it up again and it bend back. And I ask myself, why my body do that? Because I consciously I want to sit upright. Why my mind does not allow me to sit upright? And I recognize that actually when I sit upright, there are some part of my body is uh, are painful. And that is why the body do some compensation to bend, so that I don't feel the pain. Yeah. And But this is just running away from pain, not facing the pain. And when it is running away the pain, it means the other part of my organ will get sick. My, maybe my spine will get sick. Maybe my waist will get, my waist will get pain uh, if I sit like this for a long time. Yeah. So I recognize that, oh, that is a habit energy to run away from suffering. And I can see that that is still the same suffering that we running away from it. 